What's the word, y'all? Let's talk about the most underrated player on every NBA team. Well, I guess we're reacting to what Bleacher Report believes to be the most underrated player, and I'll tell you if I agree or disagree or whatever. We got a guest. Y'all haven't seen Cole in a video in some time, but he's sitting back there in the beanbag chair. It is storming here in Chicago. Content must go on. He's afraid of storm, so I'm here to console him. You can't even really tell that that's a dog back there, can you? It, it is. I promise you. And it's a big dog, too. Poor guy. Um, we haven't really uploaded that much on this channel in the recent weeks because I was traveling and stuff, but I'm also working on a new series, 30 content creators to talk about their favorite team. It's been it's been really fun, uh, but it's also been a ton of work. It starts on Monday. We already got like four or five episodes done, but I want y'all to show a lot of support on that one because I, I try my best to get content creators that I enjoy their voice, that are really good at what they do, and it, it's hard to grow a platform on the, on the internet. Um, so a lot of the people that I selected might not have a million subscribers, but I believe that their voice is something that y'all be interested in. So just show some support. Go support the people that I brought onto the show. Um, but let's talk about the most underrated player on every NBA team. All right, shout out to Zach Buckley. Starting out with the Atlanta Hawks, John Collins is the name, which actually makes sense. Uh, I personally would have probably put DeAndre Hunter, but I know that the advanced stats don't really love DeAndre Hunter, so maybe that's why he's not here as underrated if the advanced stats say the team is better without him on the floor. John Collins is probably here because he's in all of the trade conversations, and even me, I, even though I love a good trade or even a bad trade, I love it all, I look at John Collins and look at what teams might be interested and in, look at the Atlanta Hawks, and I try to think, is there anything out there that would make the Atlanta Hawks better if you trade John Collins? And the answer for me is probably not, so it's probably better that you keep him onto the team unless you know locker room issues or whatever but we saw when they went on that playoff run that John Collins has a lot to unlock it seems like he turned on his defense higher than any point of his career once they got on that run I guess it's about keeping him engaged on both sides of the ball during the regular season even Trey Young was saying ah the regular season ain't nothing compared to the play postseason well, they struggled to even make the postseason last season. So, John Collins, I understand the argument. Robert Williams, 1,000%. But also, I think people probably realize how good Robert Williams is at this point of his career. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like the the Damian Lillard debate. You remember Damian Lillard was underrated for years, and then people realized that Dame was that guy, but people still said that Dame was underrated, even though people understood that Dame was that guy. I think that Robert Williams might be underrated to, like, the casual and average NBA fan. But if you watch the NBA Finals or you watch the NBA playoffs or the entirety of the Boston Celtics season last year, you understand how valuable Robert Williams really is. In January, I went on to TNT and talked about Robert Williams almost exclusively for two minutes on national TV because that's how good of a player he is, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So I think a lot of people realize that Rob is still that dude. But he might even still be underrated with us knowing that he's that dude. That's how good he has been. Also, he is extremely underpaid. That contract is amazing for the Boston Celtics. And they go into some stats. Did you know Williams trailed only Nikola Jokic, Giannis, and Rudy Gobert with a 262 win share per 48 minutes during the regular season? I did not know that because I don't look at advanced stats like that. But, man, that's pretty good if he's fourth behind uh, two guys that finished top three was Giannis top three in MVP this season I think he was so the winner of MVP another guy that usually finishes top three and a guy that has been a consensus best defensive uh big in basketball for the last five years uh that's pretty good Rob keep it up Nicholas Claxton for the Brooklyn Nets is interesting because I remember um before free agency started it was rumored that they weren't even really interested in bringing him back if he was getting paid more than what the middle of exception was they got him on a two-year 17 million dollar deal which looks pretty good my boy Derek fell in love with Nicholas Claxton's game at the the draft combine a few years ago and I understand why it's hard to pick somebody for the Brooklyn Nets though I would say Ben Simmons has become underrated at this point. He got to get on the floor to prove it. But uh, I would consider Ben Simmons an underrated player at this point in his career. But I understand Nicholas Claxton, too. In my mind, I was thinking Bruce Brown, but I forgot. He no longer plays for that team. P.J. Washington. I had a conversation about P.J. Washington um, in my 30 for 30 series. Again, I don't have a name for that series where I'm bringing in 30 content creators. So I'm calling them 30 for 30, even though it's copyright claimed by some big old companies. Um, and we talked about P.J. Washington. We were talking about the Hornets because there's not a lot to talk about outside the Hornets. And we came to the consensus that P.J. Washington is an underrated player. Ayo Desumu. You love to see it. Um, you know who I would put as an underrated player for my Chicago Bulls? I mean, maybe it's not underrated because people realize how good Lonzo Ball is at this point. You know what? I I'm cool with the IO pick, but Lonzo is there as well. 
because uh, he is like the connector. He is the glue to a lot of the success that the Bulls had earlier in the season. The way he's able to connect the fast break play of the Chicago Bulls and also be one of the best catch and shoot three point shooters in basketball, you need that. And oh, he was an all defensive caliber player before he got injured. But you know what? Lonzo has so much hype behind him or has so much hype around him. I'm cool with Io. I'm cool with Io. Next, we have Ricky Rubio, 100% for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I mean, when Colin Sexton went out on this injury, another thing I talked about when I was talking about the Cavs in that video coming out next week, when Colin Sexton went out with his injury, the game that Colin Sexton went, went out with his injury against the Knicks, Ricky Rubio came off the bench and gave them 37 points in that game. And he was a, a, a piece that kept them afloat throughout all of the injuries they had last season. They traded him at the deadline when he tore his ACL, or MCL, M USC, I don't know, whatever he tore. And then they got him back in free agency, a good finesse. Will he be the same player last year or this year that he was last year? I don't really know. But it seemed like the team around him really loved him when he got signed. Darius Garland is out there going on Instagram and saying, welcome back. Larry Markin is saying, welcome back. They love Ricky. I love Ricky. He was an all-star. Or he's a Kenny for real all-star. Um last season um, and I'm happy that he's back with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Maxi Kleba. Yeah, I can see this, man. I mean, if you watched the Dallas Mavericks run last year, you would have realized that Max Kleba is extremely important. The fact that this man can shoot and also play good level defense at the big man position was one of the reasons why the Dallas Mavericks got as far as they did last year. But even with that, he's probably still underrated. Even Josh Green. I think Josh Green clip this right now. Um, only if it's if it comes true. I think Josh Green is going to be extremely, extremely important for the Dallas Mavericks this season and pretty good on top of that. Zig Naji, you love it. Okay, um, Zig Naji has the opportunity to be one of the breakout players in this, this year. He hasn't got a ton of minutes. As you can see, lower than 1,100 um, in his two years in the NBA. But he had 40.7% of his three-pointers as a rookie, then upped it to 46 as a sophomore. Again, he hasn't played a ton of minutes, so 46 as a sophomore is, you know, it's it's a bit misleading, but 46 still shows, and a 40% in the rookie season still shows that he is a good shooter from that position. Sadiq Bey, makes sense. Bro is uh, really good at what he does. He's a prototypical uh, 3 and D guy, and even has, has more to his game. You saw that in his 50-piece earlier this season. Um, but you know who also is a candidate here? Maybe it's just because I really like this player, and I want to see him and be successful. Marvin Bagley, once he got to the Detroit Pistons, was like a six times better basketball player in Detroit than he was in Sacramento. I don't know if that was sustainable or if he's going to actually blossom more when he's in Detroit, but I like the minutes and the games that he played with Detroit versus when he was in Sacramento. But again, I might be projecting a little bit. Kevon Looney, 1000% was one of the biggest reasons why they won that championship. His ability to be like, oh, okay, I'm not getting minutes this series or I am the best rebounding player of all time. There is an in-between there where it felt like he was okay with no matter what the role it was, he was given and he exceeded in the bench role where he wasn't playing and he exceeded and becoming Dennis Rodman 2.0. Kind of a meme conversation for sure but at one point in the conference finals for the Warriors people were like Kevon Looney Western Conference Player of the Year or Western Conference Finals Player MVP? Like that was a real thing because he was so good in what he did. Um, and, and, and some of those games, they do not win if Kevon Looney doesn't step up to the magnitude that he did. Next, Alperen Sengun. I think every NBA nerd is in love with Sengun's game because he is such a good playmaker and because he is a, he is a lot different from that center position. And we love the unknown. And coming into this draft, he was unknown. And then he showcased that he can play. Nine and a half points, five and a half rebounds, two and a half assists in just 20 minutes. It got to the point last season where I was I was like asking Steven Silas. I mean, I don't know him. I don't know why I made it seem like me and him are homies or I've had conversations with him to play Sengun more um in this season they have no choice but to play him more and I'm excited uh because he's basically like their best playmaker at that center position and he has some crazy highlights this season Jalen Smith I love that Jalen Smith is back right if, if you know me you know, no, going into his draft, I do I do a live stream every single season, I guess, except for this year, where I, I stream the draft and I just react to things happening live. Jalen Smith was one of the players that I really love coming out of his draft. And he was drafted earlier than a lot of people anticipated. And he was one of the few people in NBA history or recent NBA history to not have his second contract picked up as a lottery pick by the team that drafted him. He goes out to Indiana, and he was really solid. And when he resigned there in the press conference, they were talking about how he is going to be competing for the starting power forward spot. And I like that a lot for Indy. He's got a point guard in Tyrese Halliburton that's going to find him and probably maximize him. I love Jalen Smith coming out of the draft, and now I love him as an Indiana Pacer. So I'm in, I'm in love with this pick as the most underrated player. Terrence Mann. Oh, man. Terrence Mann kind of burned me. I'd had him as a candidate for most improved player 
the season. Um, and obviously that didn't really happen. Um, he had an okay season, but not the season that we expected. Or I expected, especially coming off the uh, Utah Jazz game, you know what I'm saying, where he was going at Rudy Gobert to go into the Utah Jazz and put up, what was it, 40? I don't even remember the exact number. Um, and I expected him to use that and elevate his game. Last season he, he played okay, but he didn't hit that next step. Maybe this is the year. Maybe I would go Amir Coffee too. They have so many players on the Clippers that I would deem underrated. Um, and as long as they can stay healthy, this team is a contender. Thomas Bryant, because who else are you going to pick? T. Bryant uh, has struggled with injuries over the last couple seasons. And then they ended up trading for uh, Porzingis last year. And they already gave Daniel Gafford a little bit of a bag. So it's like somebody has to get uh, phased out of the rotation or phased out of elite level minutes. And it happened to be Thomas Bryant. I think it's a good pickup for the Lakers to bring him back. Low key, they could have probably just got a picture from his rookie season. His his, his role is going to be elevated early into the season for sure. Especially with Jaron Jackson Jr. being now for at least a little bit um they said he could come back around halloween or he could come back around christmas who knows um brandon clark was extremely extremely important in that minnesota timberwolves series another player that we talked about um a lot in my 30 for 30 series if we're calling it that at this moment um because he was super important after having a rookie season where he i think he was all, all, all rookie team to year number two basically getting no pt it felt like and then year number three he blossomed back and, and got back into the rotation and was a huge part in that timberwolves series i like this pick he's one of five players with at least 175 triples and 40 plus three point percentage he avoided the special tag by holding down defensively and so on and so forth I mean he stepped up big for the Miami Heat when Duncan Robinson was having a regressed shooting season next we got Javon Carter for the Milwaukee Bucks I was actually extremely um confused on why Javon Carter didn't get more burn against the um Boston Celtics in their series because in the minutes that he was given he was out there hounding um and was causing turnovers and things like that you know Javon got a special place in our heart as a Chicago win and we like loosely related um so shout out to uh JC Jaden McDaniels it has to be Jaden McDaniels Daniels, right? Because all of the conversations around Rigo Bear trade was a hey, well, at least we kept Jaden McDaniels. You better blossom, my boy. But no, he was actually really solid for them. So I understand why they were um super excited about keeping him. Um and yeah, I mean it, they only have like five people on a roster, so you had to pick one of the five. Next we have Herb Jones. Ran into Her Herb Jones at Summer League. Um, and I, I stopped them and I don't really be stopping NBA players like that because I, I know that they get stopped a ton and I just want, you know, they want to go do their own thing. I stopped her and said, her, love your game, bro. Um, out of all the Pelicans players that are really enjoyable to watch, whether it be Jose Alvarado, Zaya Williamson, Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum, they got a lot of enjoyable players to watch. Herb Jones is my favorite player on their roster. He's my favorite player on that roster by far. And if you've been around the channel since I, the first time I saw him of his rookie season, you know I've been a, a part of the Herb Hive. Um, and, yeah, it, it is Herb Jones because even though – a lot of people realize that he was really good this season. And you saw that once we come playoff time, I even think he's better than what a lot of people saw. Obi Toppin. Okay. Shout out to Obi. Once they let Obi play basketball, he was really good. Kenny Hustle. He's just signed an extension, so I'm super happy for him. I'm actually surprised they gave him an extension just because he's 27 years old and seems like OKC always try to trade people. So many rumors about Shea being too old for the timelines. So I was like, 27-year-old Kenridge Williams is going to go out there and free agency, right? No. I would love to have Kenny Hustle in a Bulls jersey, and if I'm not mistaken, this picture is taken in the United Center. I could be mistaken, but this looks like the United Center. I would love to see him in the Bulls jersey, and I've been saying that for like two seasons now. Kenny Hustle is one of the most underrated players in all of basketball, not just on the OKC Thunder. And, and part of that is because he is on the OKC Thunder, so a lot of people are watching, but he is extremely, extremely good at basketball and underrated. Wendell Carter. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I've, I'm still rooting for Wendell, even though he's no longer in the Bulls jersey, because if you didn't know, you can do that. I think a lot of fans see their team trade away a person, and they immediately start to be anti that player. You don't have to do that. You know, I know I understand why you want to do it, so you can look like your team won the trade. So you want to see Wendell Carter be bad because we gave up him and Franz Wagner practically for Vucevic, who ain't that good right now. But I am still a huge fan of Wendell Carter, man. And, and he has the versatility to play the four and the five. He started shooting threes last season, and he was pretty good at it. Defensively, still nice. He's just an undersized five if you run him at the five. But that's okay. I'm excited about the Orlando Magic, and I can't wait to talk about the Orlando Magic in my series in a couple days. DeAnthony Melton, 1,000%. I love this trade the moment it happened when they got him, and now they got P.J. Tucker. I can't wait to talk about the 76ers, too, because I think they won the offseason, especially with having James Harden take the pay cut so they could do some other things. DeAnthony Melton 
is really, really good. And I think people are going to realize that. And I guess a lot of people realized that last year because he was a part of one of the best teams in basketball. But it's now going to be elevated in Philly. I feel it. Always going to be remembered as the guy that uh, made Kobe White be flustered that he was drafted so early. And a lot of draft experts did not like the pick. And here we are a couple years into his career. He's one of the more elite shooters in all of basketball. And the defense has got better every single year of his NBA career. He averaged 13.4 points per game or 50% shooting, 7.5 rebounds. <laughs> Which is crazy because Josh Hart is a guard. He's a guard. Like his frame, he's like 6'4". 7.8 rebounds is insane for Josh Hart. Um, and four assists in 41 contests, um, which is pretty good. I didn't even realize his numbers were this good, but I guess they were. Harrison Barnes. Yeah, I low-key would probably put Kevin Herter here as well. And I know Kevin Herter has had his ups and downs defensively. Like one season, he looks really good defensively. Then last season, he didn't play any defense at all. I would still consider him underrated. But Harrison Barnes is part of this team still for a reason because he is like that glue guy that gives you a little bit on both sides of the ball. And he is that veteran. And he's one of the few people that um, signed to the Sacramento Kings. He was happy to be there. Mostly because they gave him a bag. But uh, <laughs> but he got there. You know what I'm saying? Jakob Perto, Of course. Of course. I mean, another one of the most underrated players in all of basketball. I've been I've been preaching it all of last season, and it's still true to the day. Chris Boucher, another person I would have loved to have on my Chicago Bulls, but he signed back. And I'm excited about that. I think Gary Trent Jr. also will be a part of the conversation of most underrated player because I think a lot of people realize that Gary Trent Jr. can shoot the basketball and that he's king of deflections and getting in the passing lanes. But I think a, a lot of people don't see that he can also create on his own, but he doesn't necessarily have to do that because he has Fred, he has Scotty, he has Pascal. I think his game has a lot more layers to it than what he's doing right now right now he's just playing his role and he's doing it amazingly but I think he could do a lot more uh but Chris Boucher I'm not mad at this pick either you know you know Apache Beth is gonna be a part of this team this season but uh I understand it and then lastly Daniel Gaffer another guy that I've definitely seen a lot of and was a little bit sad to see get traded away but same thing what I said Wendell Carter I still root for Daniel Gafford even though he's not a part of my favorite team it's been a minute since we went through an article that was a good one. shout out to Zach Buckley tune in on Monday uh, as we start off our series, man, I, I, I would just love to see y'all show a lot of support on that one because, again, it is a lot of work to schedule these things and then have notes for 30 different organizations and just make, you know, have good conversations. And we did that.